We start from the right and we go all the way around. What you start with is morality. And notice that her eyes are completely closed. You look internal. Who are we? Who's our, what's our integrity? What's our honesty? What, what's our truth? If you have honesty and integrity and character and you're operating in truth, then that's when we can move on. And you see the evangelist on one side. You see the prophet, I think, is on that side. Evangelist, I think, is on this side right underneath. And you see how they go out to the people. And it's all the focus of the people. You see all different ages. That's how it operates. Whether you're in the prophetic or whether you're evangelist, if you're going to share Father's truth, everything has to be clear within you. That's why morals is number one. We come from morals all the way back around to what you see with the man of liberty on the other side. So that's how this was formed. And these are the four pillars that would keep all of our children trained up in the way they should go so they never depart from it. it this is a 500-year plan given to us by the pilgrims. But as you see in the front, and I hope you looked in the front, they said it was given to us by some people some grateful people they didn't say anything about the pilgrims or what this truth is and they don't call it the faith monument so that's the problem with what happens they gave congress the credit for paying for it but the pilgrim society paid for it that it is our faith monument and people keep saying that woman's not telling the truth she it's a national monument to the forefathers because they believe the liars more than they believe us just like my father said go ahead and tell people bible scholars gave this to you because they believe them more than they do me so this is morality, the first element. The second element is the law. And you see justice on this side, the weighing of justice is on this side. You see them negotiating out what the truth is, so you come to the truth before you make a determination. That is law. And you'll see on this pillar, all these pictures are in my fourth book. I did a whole chapter on this monument. Have you never seen the monument in person? And mercy is on this side. So justice is not rendered without mercy. What you're seeing in our nation now is there is no mercy, there is no grace. They're calling it justice, but it's not. But that's causing us to judge each other. You're noticing that in the body? Where people are judging people in the body and they're not doing any concern about the people who are operating against us. Help us, Lord. So help us. And so you see how this is negotiating. They're going back and forth, getting the truth. And even the Native Americans cooperated with this when they brought in all of this because they said, if our people do anything to your people, we are going to serve under Father. And, um, and they have names for the Holy Spirit uh, in their languages. And it's so powerful. And if you've never heard a chief of a tribe pray, please ask Father to take you. I've spent so much time with the tribes getting the truth from the Father about all of this. And they knew all of this truth. And they pass it on to the generations. And as they grow up to be the elders and the chief, they already know the truth before they take that position. And as I've already mentioned to you, the people who are operating with us in our states don't even know we have state constitution. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. Love and so law is the second pillar of how to raise up a child. The third pillar, do you see truth I think is on this side? Youth, is that youth? Yes. That's youth. <coughs> Education. And this is where they're all working together. And as you come to this side, this is so powerful. You see wisdom. And you see like a grandfather with the globe and the Bible. So on the other side, the mother train the mother is training up the children. mother trains up the children the way they gain wisdom is by the elders the grandparents and you see that he's got a globe and he's got the bible are you noticing how many times they're referencing the bible again david barton's rewritten the little primer in english and you can get it at christianbook.com it's about five dollars i order a bunch of them give them out as much as i can they use the new england primer and the bible that's all the parents used they trained up their own children taught them the, the work ethic taught them everything to raise them up so that they shall be powerful people on this land and be grateful for the land Father gave them. You see a list of passengers on the Mayflower. Then, this is the man of liberty. Do you see what he's doing? Each one of these has two pillars on each side. This is tyranny. They're keeping the people down. This is what they lived. 
journey is what happens until you take care of and come to liberty and see what it is. This is the boat they came on. And where did they come from? They came from total tyranny. This is why they banned all the European church activities and they were banning it for 500 years because they knew in 500 years you train up the whole fellowship of people and once they're all trained in the way they should go, you would not be having any of these battles. You would not be having any of these fights. And they were absolutely fine until the Europeans came in. This is a man of liberty. And do you see, this is not the light of Judah. This is taking care of England. And you see the claw up on the shoulder. He's not concerned, but he's forever vigilant on behalf of us. Why? Because liberty and freedom is what Father has arranged for us. It's in the scriptures. You see again and again. What can mere mortals do to us? We're his people. That's right. And that's why when he says, if my people who are called by my name, we don't understand the power we have. Again, it's more than Niagara Falls. And just on the American side, that takes care of 3.8 million homes. He said, tell my people, they're not even tapping into it. I'm with them. I never forsake them. I never leave them. That's what we have to tap into because They've tried to poison me many times, not just a year ago, and it doesn't work. That's right. They cannot they take cannot. me because I have a job to do. Break the chains. Break yeah. The chains. And that's what they do. And you see how it shows how they came in. These men were staying and they were going out on that ship at night. The mothers were over the children. They lost half of the people. Only 42 survived coming in on the Mayflower. And not everyone was a pilgrim. Some businessmen came, some marketing people came. But this is the man of liberty because this is the goal to live in liberty and freedom. And you see on this, when we follow these four pillars, do you see what they put here? We live in peace one unto another. That's why Father said, when I meet with you, may peace be with you. Peace, and you say, peace, peace also unto you. you. Yes. That's how they communicated. That's how they knew they were different from other people. Why? Because we want all to be well in your soul. If you have a hole in your soul, let us help you. It's not waiting until they're so far out there. They've got demons all throughout them, and then we have to try and deliver them. It's that may all be well with your soul. And what does hole in the soul mean? Do you have any unforgiveness? Do you have anything you haven't repented for? We never learned how to repent in the fellowships. And until you get rid of all the junk, it's really hard for Father to use you because you'll go into a situation and go, well, I can't believe you sent that person to work with me. I mean, what were you thinking, God? Right. And we start judging how God can use us and who he can use us with. The whole idea is to look internally into our morality, how we deal with people, and that's why the eyes are closed. Then you look through the laws. Where does the law come from? What did our president say when he went to that church and they tried to burn down part of it the night before? He held up the Holy Bible. And he said, this is our rule of law. He gave us a symbol and he's asked us, he said, how were there so many of you more than anybody else in this nation and you let this happen? And nobody's even thought about that. And that's why I'm so grateful to be with you because you're rising up and you're not gonna let this continue because no. we aren't gonna have liberty and freedom in this generation, let alone in the future generations. And that's why God had me put this in every single book. And several of you asked, well, where did you get all of this education and all of this knowledge? It's with the Father. Father, I can't tell him about that. I haven't even been there. The, today is the first time I've set my feet on this soil, and it's in every one of my books. Why? God did it as, God did it as a counter to the Guidestones. I didn't know anything about the Guidestones. And he said, this is why I sent you to Georgia, because this has to be dealt with. And then he told me about For the Sake of America from the Three Prophets, remember? The angelic vortex over Macon, the angelic vortex over uh, Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Where is the central point? The highest hill in Elbert County where they put those stupid guidestones. And if Christ does come back through the eastern gates, which shall be open unto him, those will be the eastern gates to America that Father's already pronounced to his prophets. And we have to. We have to. Because it's not about Christ come and save us. Because what has he done? He's already saved us. Okay? People keep going, oh, if Christ would do more, it's no different. Will Trump come back and do more? Will Trump come back and finish this? It's not for them to finish. We need to do we these four the things, train up the children to do these four, and then we can be there with him and gloriously go into the millennial reign. It's not to be swept out of here. 
So may you enjoy this time, take pictures of every single angle of this, and it's all in book four. He had me do a whole chapter on this in book four, leading us into book five. And so may you enjoy this day, may you enjoy seeing this truth, and knowing that all the people that are trying to tell me I'm a liar, it's God that told me this. And then I had to go and research it, because it's not in any of the textbooks, because they've taken all the truth away from us and away from our children. And the only way you can train up a child in the way they should go is if you know the truth. Amen. So Amen. I am so grateful to be with you guys that the first time I ever set my feet on this soil because everywhere we go is holy ground and we're claiming this. We're claiming this for the future generations. Yes. Thank you for being here with us. Yes. yes. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Ohio Brett. No, Ann. <laughs> Gideon's Army. Gideon's Army. I, I've never yeah. been here. I've never been here. <laughs> First time. First time. Now, there's a, there's a really great part. You need to come forward. Uh, born free. Born free, live free. That's your shirt. I don't remember your name. Okay. How long have you? How long did you live right here and you can see this from your bedroom window? Uh, one year. One year. And this man came up to me and said, everything you just told these people is absolutely true, yeah. but no one has ever shared this. So why don't you go ahead and tell them what you know about Turn all around this. and look at the camera, sir. At the camera, right over here. About this monument? Well, well of yes. course, I, everything has always been the, they've always caused the four or five this monument. Yeah. And, and if you walked around and read it, you know, then you'll see what it's all about. And, and uh, you know, basically everything I see is what you said. It's just a rehash of what you said. Yeah. Did the people around here visit? Do they understand the significance of this monument? Not particularly. No. And, and I wasn't really, uh, at that time, 1968, I guess it was, uh, you know, I was a uh, pretty young kid there, you know, so I, I wasn't either, you know, and but you pay attention and you learn things as you age, you know. People need knowledge and truth. Absolutely. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Because knowledge. So, knowledge. You know, God always sends a witness. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and look at what does. you just provided from 1968 when he lived here for a year. God sent him so he could say what you're saying is true, but nobody knew it and nobody came to see it.